Over the summer, I bought and reviewed this small One Mix 3S Yoga laptop, and I've been using it for school for about a term, and it's been quite a good laptop. I've, you know, I've, I've quite enjoyed using it. The only problem with it is the fan noise. This is the fan from inside the machine, and the, the fan always runs, usually, if you're on the web doing, you know, doing homework, doing anything, watching videos. The fan is going to run on a slow speed, and that's just to get rid of the little bit of heat from the machine. That's normal. The only issue being, while the fan isn't very, very loud on low, it's definitely noticeable, especially in a place like a quiet library. And the noise is quite distracting. It sounds... I would describe it as the sound of a weed whacker from the dis from a distance. So imagine someone using a weed whacker outside in the distance. It's it's a whine sort of sound. It's it's not the sound of air rushing. You don't really hear that uh, with this fan until it speeds up to about full speed. Um, normally it's just that whining sound of the motor inside. And this is a four pole motor and those I've found in computer fans tend to create that sound if the driver chip isn't using sine wave drive. Um, the fan itself seems fine, um, but, enough, but enough about that. I wanted to share a quick modification I did to this computer in order to hopefully get rid of that sound and make it a little more usable in quiet environments. So I've put in a fan from an Apple MacBook Air. It's an A1370 if I'm not mistaken. Let me quickly check. Yes, it's an A1370. and. A kind user of the Rossman Group forums um, actually measured one of these, the thickness for me, and that's how I confirmed that it would fit. Here I have a fan that I previously ordered for a Nintendo Switch. I assumed that the form factor was similar. And the reason I ordered this fan originally was because this has a three-phase motor inside, and it's got six poles internally, and that means the motor runs really, really smoothly and without um, annoying whining sounds. It, you should only hear the airflow. Unfortunately, though, the motor part of this fan is actually thicker than the rest of the fan, and when the bottom cover is put on the computer, this will actually touch. So these aren't actually compatible with this, even though physically it will fit. Um, so unless you were to modify the bottom casing, this is not really what you need. This is the original fan. It's got a four-pole motor, and that's probably where the noise is coming from. The whining noise is probably due to the fact that the original fan, which I'll give you a close-up of, does not have a sine wave motor driver. That's what I suspect. I haven't looked that up yet. But I do know that it does have four poles. It's a pretty standard looking fan inside. I won't open that here for you. But So um, long story short, I found this MacBook Air fan that fits absolutely perfectly. I think it's a four pole motor. However, it does have a much better driver chip in it. So it's much quieter, and the improvement is really, really night, basically night and day. Um, in order to install it, I basically pulled the wires off of the original fan. They're labeled with black, red, and yellow, in case you do need to go back. I just unsoldered them. They're under the sticker. And I tack soldered them onto the back of this, um, this um, the flex cable for the MacBook Air's fan. You just have to tin the pads, the gold pads with the with your soldering iron and you know put a little flux on there. And you very, very carefully do that. Um, putting some Kapton tape on it helps. That's sort of a micro soldering job though. These wires are very, very thin. And if you haven't soldered very much before, it would probably be quite difficult. Um, this actually took me quite a few minutes. But long story short, I soldered the red wire to the plus marking on the flex cable, the black wire to the minus, and I think there was a pin labeled A, which corresponds to the tachometer pin, uh, which I put the yellow on. So as you can see, the uh, computer's turned the fan back on, and, you know, I don't really hear it too much. You can probably hear that quiet um, air rushing noise. I'll let it run after a while to show you. The airflow that the fan produces is really, really large. It blows tons and tons of air. There's no problem whatsoever. It should blow more air than the OEM fan, in my opinion, because it is larger than the OEM fan slightly. I'll open up uh, Prime 95 for you guys quickly, just to show you what that's like. So we're gonna run small FFTs. 
I have not taken off the power limit on this. I haven't figured out the VRM cooling quite yet. So we're just going to leave it on stock 15 slash 7 watts. Um, and we'll just see how that goes. So we're starting the test and you can see in task manager we're going up. The computer switched on the fan so far. And the fan's running on the low speed or what normally would be the low speed, but it's running pretty quickly. So I'm going to let Prime run for a little while, and the heatsink isn't getting very warm because it's only uh, limited to about 7 watts continuously. But this is a huge improvement from prior. Um, before, the fan would be whining and creating these loud sounds, and it would do that if it was running Windows updates or anything else. So here, you know, oh, there we go, it's uh, finally turned the fan up to full. Now keep in mind the fan does sound like um, any other MacBook Air, so if you were to turn the fan speed on a MacBook Air up to full, this is what you would probably hear. The air coming out is quite, um, there's quite a lot of air coming out of that, it's quite strong. Overall the thermal performance of this should be quite, um, quite similar, if not better, than the original fan. So no concerns there. I am using the back microphone on the camera, so... We're about seven centimeters away. The computer only really seems to have two speeds that it really runs on. About three normally, I think. But this is definitely the highest. The fan is, uh, so we're taking advantage of the fact that Apple's fans are asymmetric. So the fan blades aren't evenly spaced on, like on this one. So we should get lots, lots less of that, um, the pure tones. We just hear airflow and that's perfectly normal and that's what we want. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make a video of the process of actually installing that fan. So I'll show you some pictures, I'll put them up on the screen, and I'll sort of talk through them. And hopefully you should be able to get an idea of what I did. So for this first picture, um, here we have the original MacBook Air fan as it came in the mail, right next to the original fan in the computer, still installed. So as we can see, the size difference is there. It's slightly, slightly bigger. And thickness-wise, I measured both um, in the second picture, which I'll put up right now. Um, both of them are pretty close in thickness. The MacBook Air fan, like the motor part, just like the fan from the Nintendo Switch, is a little bit higher, but not significantly higher, and it does not interfere with the bottom case. And as we can see in the third picture, this is how I actually installed the fan. So in order to install this fan, I had to clip off the, um, the corner of the casing near the, near the, near the, um, near the wire, the fan wire, as you can see in that picture. Um, I first took off the four screws on top of the fan, which are these ones, and I just took a pair of these uh, wire snippers and just sort of cut the excess of the casing off just so that it would clear that standoff. And after that, you know, it pops right in. You do want to make sure, you know, when you put it in, you push the fan against the speaker side as much as you can, just so you don't uh, put too much stress on that flex cable that sits under the fan. Um, other than that, it, it's more, more or less a drop-in installation. In order to put the fan in the computer and hold it there, I got this tape off DigiKey. This is 3M VHB. 5962 was it um I'll, I'll put all the information in the description down below because i can't remember right now 
but this is really sticky tape. It's, it's really good. It's designed to stick uh, LCD screens to phones. Um, so I just used a bunch of this underneath that fan right there. I didn't put any on the flex cable, of course, just, you know, between this area. And this stuff is very, very sticky and it becomes stickier over time. So I'm confident that will hold the fan in. No need to use screws or anything. Um, because the casing here has been cut off to accommodate that display cable, this screw over here w won't go on, but it won't impact that. And that display cable will block the airflow. So everything goes through the heatsink. So that's about it. Um, there's not too much to it other than, you know, I'm quite happy with the results. And this is, this wasn't a very expensive modification at all because these fans, you can get them for about two, three dollars on eBay. Uh, if I have a look here, I, I, I believe I got mine for 150 US. So that's $1.50 US with a few dollars shipping. Um, and overall, I'm quite happy with it. Yeah, I guess that's about it. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know down below. And at that, uh, thanks for watching.